Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us here today. It is an absolutely gorgeous day here in Portland, Oregon. I hope it's lovely wherever you are. See that there's quite a few people from all over the, the world, which is kind of amazing. Thank you so much for joining. So I haven't painted for you guys on a Friday in a while. Um, we've had some projects going and some personnel issues. <laughs> Right, and uh, so we haven't been able to do it as frequently as we'd like. Um, but, uh, and so of course today I chose something uh, to paint for you a couple days ago, which I thought I had totally figured out, or at least somewhat had an, an idea of how I was gonna approach it. And then I woke up this morning a little panicked, like, oh boy, I don't, I don't know about this one. So, um, I'm going to do a little reading for you today from Mark Rubin's The Creative Act um, to help myself as much as to help you. And then I have a little, couple little short announcements and then I'm just going to get right into my painting today. Now, um, the first thing I want to say about the painting is I, as I said, I, I had this idea of how to approach it and that sort of went all out the window some of which had to do with the fact that I didn't have the paper that I was thinking of. I thought for sure I had a piece of dark pastel net, dark blue or dark green. I did not. So uh, I had to just kind of re reimagine what I was gonna do. And that's totally fine. And also I have to let myself go that it, this, it might just be really bad today. And um, that's maybe a shame because I haven't painted for <laughs> a while, but I am going to allow myself the, 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 the well, I'm just going to get in there, have fun, see what happens, maybe experiment around, maybe quite a lot, and um, we'll see. So um, just a little, a little caveat, I guess, with regards to today's demo. And so I'm reading this little um, piece by Mark Rubin about play. Rick Rubin. Mark, Rick Rubin, sorry, thank you, thank you, thank you, Kevin. It's Rick Rubin. Play. Making art is a serious matter, harnessing creative energy from source, shepherding ideas into the physical plane, participating in the cosmic cycle of creation. The opposite is also true. Making art is pure play. Within every artist, there's a child emptying a box of crayons onto the floor, searching for just the right color to draw the sky. Might it be violet, olive, or burnt orange? As artists, we strive to preserve this playfulness throughout the gravity of the enterprise. We embrace both the seriousness of the commitment and the playfulness of being completely free in the making. Take art seriously without going about it in a serious way. So <laughs> that's what I'm gonna try to do today. We'll see how that goes. A uh, couple announcements. We are right on the verge of, uh, of launching year five of monthly pastel painting lessons online, which I'm very, very excited about and pleased about. Um, more on that next week. Um, but suffice it to say, we have some amazing new content. I just um, got an announcement that I was accepted into the Pastel Society of America as a enduring brilliant show with one of the lesson pieces. So off to a really grand start with the lesson pieces this year. So that's really, really cool. So I can't wait to share what that is with you. I'm not supposed to share the piece until they're, they're ready to launch the show. We're also gonna be launching some really cool new features, which we'll have lots more on next week. I'm very excited about drawing in to, from the, the larger community for the lessons, which is really amazing. And I'm really over the moon pleased to announce that for the first time in about four years, I'm gonna be doing an in-person workshop here at my studio. And we, we um, announced uh, the, first, the first session of it to just our monthly people. It sold out within a very, very short amount of time. We had so many people wanting 
it that we decided that we were going to do a second session right the next week. So there are, so there's loosen up and let go, which is a three day um, pastel workshop and garden plein air, which is two days, one day of plein air painting in my lovely garden and one day of critiques. Um, so very intensive, personalized critiques. So um, as of right now, there are, I think, about four spots left in the Loosen Up and Let Go. There are only 12 in both. And I think there's a few more than that in the Garden Plain Air. So go to the website and check those out. They're, they're kind of going fast. So if you want, if you want that, um, make sure you, you go check it out and, and, and get it. Um, so that is, that's it for that. Um, uh, yeah, so um, I, I want to just show you a couple things that I used this morning to think about how I was going to approach the, the painting. So I always think it's a really good idea if, you, if you're kind of feeling stuck to look at some other artists, the way, the way they approach similar subject matter. So I thought immediately, I thought of Van Gogh. And I'm thinking about some of the, that's, let's see, the, that, yeah. I thought of the Van Gogh's, um, the cherry blossoms. Of course, the, cause the, the spring um, tree here. And then this, this other tree by Van Gogh, just, and, and these pieces, I feel like he's really concentrating on the mark making the energy, the expressiveness. Of course, he was, he was more um, associated with um, expressionist um, and impressionist, but to me, it feels like a lot of his work is is that expression um, more than looking at the observed world. Like the impressionists were making an impression of the observed world, where Van Gogh was maybe more inward and, and expressing himself. And then I was looking at this piece by um, Mitchell Bannister, which also reminds me of a of George Innes, so a softer, more um, kind of ethereal feel. And so for me, I'm, I sort of kind of like to straddle those two worlds a little bit when I'm painting. But in this particular reference, I think the thing that, you know, I'm always wanting to identify what is it that has attracted me to this particular reference. I think for one thing, it's the big abstract shapes of the two, those two main trees, that light blossoming tree being silhouetted by the darker tree behind it. And then the beautiful shadows on the sidewalk, those cast shadows, the light. So to me, that the light is a lot of what's going on. Also, in the tops of the trees, the, sun, the sunlight sort of shimmering through uh, in, a, in a particular way and kind of spilling around part of the edges of particularly the dark tree. And those clouds are kind of interesting. So um, that the idea of what has attracted me to the scene is also driving my idea of how to approach it, if that makes sense. So I'm pulling all that together and then I'm thinking about, okay, I've got this idea. How do I harness the media that I have and the, the, the starting approaches that I have in my toolkit, be it in whatever kind of underpainting or ground or, you know, materials, what can assist me to most efficiently get to that end point where I'm hoping and I don't have in my mind, now I know some artists may visualize the end product. I typically don't, am not doing that. I'm more deciding on the factors that I just discussed and then hoping for a satisfying result at the end. <laughs> so, um, so that's that. Oh, and before, let's, let's go down to the top down. I just did want to share this one more thing before I go. So Kevin brought this today. He got this from the Goodwill Bins. This is, I, I don't know if you can see, it's a pretty enormous book. Let's put the, the Rick Rubin book next to it. So 
that gives you a little scale. This is an incredible book. They got it for two bucks at the bins and it's in pretty pristine condition. These plates are just amazing. And, um, and by the way, when I was leafing through it, Klimt was another one that I was thinking of. It might help me have some ideas about how to approach that, that um, blossoming foliage because he did a lot of this kind of dense foliage masses with, with flowers. So that, that's a pretty good idea right there. That might, that might help me out. Okay, so that, that is that. And now I might get this out of the way. That one is not fitting in the bookshelf any, <laughs> any place. I, that's definitely not. Okay, the other thing that I did for myself this morning is I printed out the, the reference photo large, and I also printed it out on photo paper. So I'm doing all these things to help me, and then I've got it up here on my iPad. Now, and you... Bryce, could you go to the iPad there? Now, what I've done here is I've color picked on the iPad some of this these blossoms. See that that's the dark inside there, but that's that's the color of some of those blossoms. So we know those blossoms are not white. Because if we come up here to the sky, that's white. So you can't even see it on here on the on the white background. Let's see what the blue sky is doing. It's like that. So those blossoms are definitely not white. Do we want them to be gray or do I want to give it a little more um, playfulness than that? I think so. I, so I'm going to probably be picking things that maybe some purples and blues and maybe even some pinks, maybe some um, turquoise for some of that, um, that foliage. And um, same thing with a dark tree. It's pretty, it's pretty dark, dark, dark gray green. And I might want to give it a little more intense color to give it a little something more exciting. So we'll see when we get there. And as I said, I have no idea how this is going to go today. So thanks for watching. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. First things first, I'm just going to get some, um, some, uh, value in here and some color. I've done a little bit of sketch. I have did the sketch uh, with a, just a charcoal pencil. The, the main thing about the sketch that I, you might notice is this baseline where I, where I see the end of the street. It's low on, in this composition. So I think the tendency would be to, to get that up a little high and that would throw things off a bit. And uh, so that's if you're following along, you want to make sure you get that horizon low. I might even have a tendency to have it be even a little bit lower, but I want enough room to really play with these fun cast shadows here. And you could see I just thought about these big abstract shapes. What what is this doing? Not I'm not thinking about little little bits here. I'm thinking about these big big shapes. And I'll continue with that for as long as I need to. All right, but I got lots of information. The good thing about having this, I'll go ahead and put this right up there. The good thing about having this, oh, that might be confusing. We've already got that there for the, the image. Um, the good thing about printing out something like this is that I could draw right on this. And that would be something that, that I, I like to do really frequently. Like I'll come in, um, where do I go? I've got a Sharpie here. I'll come in and go, okay, what, what is this shape doing? And when you have something printed out on this cheap paper, um, it's no, no big deal. So I think that that's, that's pretty good. Um, what I've got going here is pretty, that's pretty good, I think. Yeah, I might want to get this up a little bit. All right. Okay, all right, I'm ready to get going. I didn't waste too much time. Let's get this here. All right, I'll put my hair up so I'm not in your way, I think. Nope, 
to be up. Finally getting some nice sunny weather here in Portland. We had a, it was a rough spring, boy. All right. So I'm thinking about these, that, Expressing it for the time being with just this one color. But I will be adding on to that just, just to get something going. Now I may decide to bring in um, an alcohol wash into that. This, I, this is something I considered uh, the other day. That, so this is a little bit lighter value, so I've got these two going right now. Now, um, for the distant tree, uh, I don't want to go too dark too soon. Can you remind us of your paper again? The piece, paper is pastel matte. And this is a little lighter green on the edges because I see the edges of this is having a little bit lighter bits to it and then I'm going to come around with a darker version and I don't want this to be too somber And I don't need to fill every bit of the paper at this point, especially if I'm thinking about an alcohol wash. I don't want to fill the whole paper. I'm going to get some of this. Now there's um, some really, there's a, there's a house and I see a vehicle parked in the driveway right here. And I see some bits of the structure of the house. Now I'm really gonna keep that very, very simple, but there are some things in there. There's some pots, there's a chair, there's some things that are kind of interesting and that I might in fact want to include. We'll see. But so far, and then I can use the same green. There's some, there's a planter that's near the sidewalk here. And I think I want to pull in some a little bit more intense green in here. There's some grass right back there. So I'm going to put that in just to kind of remind myself of where that that is more than anything for right now. And I actually I kind of want it even lighter. It might not be quite that big. And um, also, this purple, I don't think it's a bad choice to start me out with this cast shadow here. Not, not terrible. And then some little bits in there. And consequently, I'm feeling like I want some of this aqua or that more blue in here. That could be good. And then this, this is um, 
This little area right here beyond the tree is also kind of dark. It's a, it's a, it's sort of a muted gray. Um, maybe not quite that dark. It's like so. Now this is actually darker against it, like so. So I'm just setting up the value relationships and also thinking um, about what's in the light and what's in the shadow. And now this light, it's pretty warm um, on the street. Um, so we can start getting what's in the light here. There's a, that vehicle that I kind of like that's right, right here. It's small right there. Uh, I don't need to say much more at this point than that. I do need to narrow the path here. That's really narrow. And that's part of what I think makes it interesting and beautiful. Oops. All right, so far it doesn't look like much, but there's a pot there. There's all, there's all kinds of things here in the garden. There's a pot there. This is a, looks like a rhododendron in here. But right now I'm just expressing these as Pretty simple abstract shapes. They don't have a lot of um, variety and color in them yet. And that's good um, for me right now. All right, so now once I have that, I'm going to start. I, I want to get some sky in, and the sky around the foliage is really uh, light and value white, really. So the only thing I really need to do is put in some bits where the sky is blue, and just kind of deciding on where I want that and what kind of blue. I think I want a little bit more like that. That's pretty dark but I can come back in with that. All right, that's kind of what I'm thinking for just a initial block in lay in. There are some little shapes in here that are going to want to express. And um, so I'm trying to use the sticks that I have going before I start adding on to them. So even if it's not exact, if it's in the value range that I'm looking for, then I'm good. There's this other little light that's coming around here. kind of like it, so I'm going to include it. It's quite nice. And then there's this pot. There's a pot right here. It's a clay pot. It's red right there. And I 
I think it's a good little counterpoint. There's a there's a stop sign over here. So I think when I get to it, having that and that is the proximity of that's pretty pretty interesting and good. There's a little wispy tree right here. That might be fun to get. So I think it's a not not a bad setup. How about um some of this br branches of this tree. I don't need to do too much, just kind of get something. A few, just to kind of remember what I what I might want whether that works or not sure all right so now I'm thinking an alcohol wash would would be a good move at this point I'm I'm not dissatisfied with this I I just am curious whether the the thing that the bugaboo I think with this piece is the that large um, blossoming tree. It's really well, you know, it's taking up a lot of the um, composition. So um, all right, so let's get some alcohol going. Now I'm thinking that this is going to be helpful because it's going to help me with some edges. And while this is drying, I can take some questions if people have any. Mm. No. There's one inside, though. It might be. It might be in here, Kevin. Now I like the alcohol wash because I like what it does to the edges and gives me a, you know, it's going to dry, it darkens it, but it's going to dry lighter than this. So it kind of, it usually winds up working out pretty nicely. So I'm not just coming straight across, I'm actually using this to, to get some painterly strokes in here. Helps me get that kind of fractured color that I'm always after. Oh, you found it. Yeah. Now, interesting that I am, you know, I, I use some different kinds of color in here, but it still has a pretty, um, uh, I would say, restrained palette, even so. So um, Lois asks if the pastel mat curls with the alcohol wash. What um, happens with her sometimes? So her right now I'm being a little careful about how much alcohol I'm using. That's why I'm not, I'm not just coming across it super aggressively um, because I don't want it to, to um, flood the paper too much. Yes, you can get some buckling. I am not one that, I don't get really upset with the buck, buckling. I know a lot of my students like, oh, it buckles, it's buckling. Like, yeah, it buckles. Um, so I just don't, you know, I just kind of keep on, keep on going, keep on trekking on. Um, and Sandy wants to know, um, is there a particular brush that you use for the alcohol wash? Yeah, so um, this is just a, an old um, synthetic brush. Um, 
I try to relegate this activity to just a few brushes so I'm not messing up a whole lot, bunch of brushes. Now pastel matte is not too hard on the on the brushes, but if you start doing this with the heavy heavier um, duty sanded paper like a UART, um, you're gonna really tear into those brushes. So you do want to be a little thoughtful about that, I think. Okay, so this is a good setup. I'm not not unhappy with what what's going on here and that's kind of what I would expect at this stage of the game let's see what we got all right let's get this a little dry if you wouldn't mind Kevin and then we'll see what what I can it's buckling a little bit but it's not too bad Right. It's away. And so now, from now on, from here on out, I'm going to really want to try to expand on some color um, and really go go for those. Get the, the basically turning the lights on. We've got a lot of that dark, big, now dark shadow. So we want to get the little bits of light and the sky going. So that's will be my next next stage of the game. So I hope I hope I see some of you here um, in September for the workshop. It's really exciting and get to share my my space, my garden with you guys. Um, I'm working on getting it kind of dialed in for that. That's it's always good to have company over, right? <laughs> Nothing like that to get get you get you in gear, get you in shape. So working on it. What's cool about the workshop is that uh, I love teaching at my own studio because we've got everything. We're not going to run out of pastels. We're not going to run out of paper. Um, I'll have extra stuff here on hand. I also have easels and side tables and all of that. So you, if you're coming, most people are coming from out of town. You don't have to lug a whole lot of stuff. I've, I've got everything here. So even if you're doing the plain air, the garden plain air, I, I've kind of got you covered because we've got some nice metal easels that for the kind of plain air that we're going to be doing, it's perfectly adequate. All righty. Good deal. Ooh, it's so warm. All right. Let me make sure I get this in the right spot, guys. Is that okay? Okay. All right. It did Little, I wouldn't say it's too bad. All right. Okay, I think the most exciting part of this painting is right in there. And getting that little, that glow around that tree would be fun to try to, to get. And um, so all of that, thinking about that a little. And then Add a little bit of. Oh, that's a little intense.
Oh, this is not, that's not what I wanted. Let's see this. This is. I love that alcohol wash. It really sets that initial layer right into the paper in a really strong way. So you really um, um, having a, uh, not having to fight the 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 layers. That little funny little guy right here. And then there's that car. Let's see if I can get the car in. The car's small and it's not there's not much to it. And there's just glint of light off of it, which is really kind of cool. And kind of, I don't need a whole lot more than that for that car. I'll come back to it. There's some really interesting negative shapes in here, back in here. Cool opportunities for things. If I was left to my own devices, I'd really want to get in there and play with play with those little shapes. And uh, just to clarify, Marla, you use seventy percent alcohol always. Yeah, I try to because it's a little less rough on that paper, hopefully. That's the idea, anyway. All right, how about some of these dark shapes coming down off of this tree? And this light right in here in these it's really um, pretty it's got some color to it so I'm putting some color in there um, might be too much mm. this
And I'm just going a little stronger with this light on the sidewalk. Mm. I don't really want to go white. So finding myself Okay, there I've got a little spot that's getting a little muddy. It's getting a little there we go. I get something over the top of it. It's okay. Right, and then I'll come back and get these spots. Now I think what I should do is I should begin to get some of this um, other foliage mass of the of the other tree in to see where I'm at with it because I it's hard for me to tell where I am until I've got something in there. Um, one other thing I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go ahead and because I want to see what that white is in relationship to what's going to be going on here. Here's a question. Mm -hmm. um, have we done any lessons specifically on negative painting? I can't remember. I think we have. Somewhere along the way. Yeah. I, I don't know if we did I, a live stream for it, but we Yeah. We may have. We definitely covered that subject quite oh, a bit. Oh yeah, I love doing it. So I know we have. Oh. Well, just Put that one on the back burner. Maybe there'll be a live stream about negative painting. Mm -hmm. Great topic. And that. That. Cast shadow. It's amazing. You want it. You want it to breathe and have air. So lightening it up a little bit. Getting that a little more. Yeah. Okay, let's see what's next. I don't know. Well, it's a little messy right now, but I, you know, it is, but there's something there. I always like to give myself the benefit of the doubt when I'm painting, like, okay, just reserve judgment on it until you get a little, little further in. And then sure, all right, sometimes it does, they don't work. That's, that's the way it goes. Um, that's 
a little too dark. Let's see, Not this one. Okay, because right up here, so if I go up here, then I'm going to bring that white around and it's pretty um, there's a good difference in value between the, the tree and the sky. So I want to maintain that difference. So there we go, that's good. There's only a little bit of that blue. I don't really need it everywhere. It's starting to have some of that quality that I want. That's a little hard to see what's going on. That's okay. I want this mass to be a little bit more connected. One of the things that I want to emphasize, and I'm <laughs> proving the point here, <laughs> that it's not, they don't all paint themselves. And sometimes um, I, I've, I've had a, a, a occasion have students um, say to me, well, you, I can't keep up with you. You're 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 too fast. You're too um, um, pa painting. Your paintings always turn out. Well, my paintings don't always turn out. You guys, generally speaking, you see in the, in my lessons, you see ones that do. Um, hopefully, I make good choices for the live streams. Like today, I think I you know I could have made a. I could have made my job easier um, in, in front of um, an audience, if you will. Um, how, however, I, at the same time, I feel like it's Im important for you guys to, to see how I'm going to deal with something that is not coming together um, just like magically. It's... Um, it, take some thought and I here I didn't have quite the, the materials that I would have liked I it's not maybe an ideal subject for a, a live stream but it's okay let's keep going this is part of um, being a painter most of most of what being a painter is not always coming up with the 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 ones that are happening easily that's too bright see i don't want to put that white there if i put that white there it won't this tree it won't be residing in the shadows and i want it to be it's definitely residing in the shadow, and I want it to stay there. Hmm. It's kind of coming together. Yeah, it's not. Um, I like it. I'm, more, I'm, I'm into the more abstract, wilder pieces, you know. Um, okay, so now looking at it, I 
it is sort of, there's things about it that are coming together. There are things about it that are um, a little tricky. Um, I'd like to spend 10 minutes just kind of going at it in a way that um, without talking, just see what, see what I can do with it for 10 minutes of like just pretending like no one's watching. <laughs> so That's the other thing that I um, just want to mention is that um, painting for a lesson is a lot different than me in my studio painting by myself. It's just like night and day. Um, there's, it's two different, two different things. And though I try to be as authentic as I possibly can when I'm doing the lessons, there's just, there's an element that I just can't replicate um, for you. Um, it's just not, doesn't work that way. Um, I'm not really fond of that green there. So let's see what we could do instead. And I, I don't want to be just adding stuff to add. Let's see. This is some Harry Ludwig.
I've got just a couple more minutes. Okay, I actually see um, an, an avenue for myself, which is cool. But definitely a tricky one. Yeah, um. Didn't go too awry, but could have gone. <laughs> Could have been. But there's this, this, there's some pretty fun stuff in there, gotta say. What else? What else? What else? Um. Woo. Okay. I'm just about gonna come to a stopping point. So if you have any questions, I'll do that before we before we sign off for the day. Oh, there's one other little thing I want to do. So I want, I want this to be a little darker over here. I'd have to figure that one out a little bit more. Get down some light there. All right, guys. I'm do you want to take a look at it yeah. on the uh, tabletop, or? Uh, yeah, we could do that, or we could put some. Maybe on the tabletop because it's squared. It's squared up a little okay. bit more. Do you want? Do you want the um, the frame? Um, yeah, let's get the frame. Yeah, I mean that's. 
That's pretty fun. There's potential here for sure. That this this area definitely is an area that needs a little tweaking, a little little refinement for sure. But but some of this I like. I like the 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 abstract shapes that are going on. This is not big enough. Will those work? No, I can't find the other ones. Okay. They're not in here. They're in the bottom drawer. Yeah. Oh, here they are. Yep. Yep. <laughs> oh, it's not. It's got some potential there for sure. Oh. Yeah, this this is an area that's really kind of cool. I want to pull out a few more lights here. Work on the this 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 edge here. Um, these abstract shapes. So there's a lot. You might say that there's a lot of detail in here. There's chairs and pots and you know stuff in their their yard there, but um, which is fun to paint. But you can see I just express those as just little blocks of color, even the stop sign, just one little dot. Um, so the, these shapes kind of need some refinement, edges need some refinement, but it actually did come together in a kind of nice way. And it does have that, that quality that this tree is sitting in the shadow there. And that's really, that's what I was after for sure. So yeah, do we have any questions or? Nope. Okay, guys. Well, thanks for joining in the uh, fun. I hope it was fun for you. I don't know if it was fun for me. It was a little bit of a struggle, but that's okay. Happy to do it for you. And um, we'll be back um, sometime soon. I'm not sure when our next live stream will be, but um, we'll be back at you and with um, another pastel painting. Okay, guys. Hope you have a great weekend. Um, get in some painting and some sunshine and all the good stuff. All right. See you soon.